G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for another episode of Space Engineers. So today what we're going to talk about is welding ships. Now behind me I have two of my welding ships. Well, basically it's the same welding ship but it's just two different versions. So first we're going to start off with how to actually build welding ships and you know cargo ports and things like that then after that I'll go into gravity and thrusters and all the different planets and atmospheres and things like that and then from there we'll head on into what you need to know about batteries and all that sort of jazz and then after all that's done then I'll probably get stuck into actually redesigning this ship as I it's not really successful in per tam gravity so I kind of want to redesign it so that it is so the first thing I want to cover when it comes to welding ships is the cargo ports. Now if we have a look at the side here we can see that these medium cargo containers have small cargo ports on the sides. And if we get rid of this welder here and we have a look at this ship you can see that we have the large cargo port right behind the welder because if you have a look at the welder itself we can see that it only has a large cargo port behind it. Now, basically, with welding ships and welders and components and the way that space engineers works and conveyors and all this sort of jazz, large items such as steel plates and things like that cannot transport through these small little tubes here and these small little conveyor ports. So if you're designing yourself a small grid welding ship, then you need to use these large ports so you can see that I have my large cargo containers or my medium cargo containers arranged in such a way where the large ports are in line with each other and then from there I've gone to the medium conveyor tubes and then the medium conveyor tubes again which is a little bit hmm, the naming convention is a little bit strange but basically the cargo ports on these conveyor tubes is large and then from there I have a conveyor frame then I have a conveyor junction with the large cargo ports on all, all the way through. And then I have my connector, which also has a large cargo port behind that. So yeah, basically, I've basically just got my cargo containers arranged in either side of the ship. And then in the center, I have my batteries and then all my thrusters and so on and so forth. So that's the first thing you need to take into consideration when you're designing your world ship. Now the second thing to take into consideration is the amount of gravity on the planet that you are using it on. So if you're using a world ship on a planet such as let's say Titan which is a moon and believe it or not it actually has an atmosphere and the gravity of that planet is only 0.25. So you don't need a lot of thrusters to actually have a successful welding ship on that planet. But if you're doing something on, let's say, Pertam with a gravity of 1.2, then you do need quite a bit of thrusters. And the third thing to consider is when you do have all these thrusters, you actually need to have enough battery power to power them. And that is actually why I have this second ship here. So this was kind of like a on the fly design in my survival series, Wasteland Survival. And it was an, in an attempt to gain more power to the ship because it wasn't really working out too well. So although this ship looks really cool, um, it actually needs a little bit of work. So that's what we're going to ultimately redesign later. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's have a look at all these LCDs here. So on the left hand LCD, you can see that I have listed the, you know, the gravity and the equations you can work out to you know how many thrusters you need and all this sort of jazz so if you want to you can pause this and hopefully this is um, explanatory so what I'll do is I'll get rid of my HUD and my welder so but if we have a look at the left hand side here you can see that the gravity between all the planets is different so basically if we have a look at our HUD and we see planetary gravity and it's 1.0, well, basically, Earth gravity is 9.80665 meters per second, as I have listed right here. So basically, we times that by each planet, you know, so Pertam has a gravity of 1.2. So you can see that that's pretty much 1.2 times that value is that. And then what we need to do to work out how much the ship can lift is we have the amount of Newtons divided by the gravity in meters per second. 
So this particular ship has 24 small thrusters and it has one large thruster. So the total value of all those thrusters put together is 2,600 kilonewtons, which works out to be 2,600,000 newtons. So all we do is we get that value and then we divide it by the gravity, which is this value here. So divide that by 9.80665 and then we end up with a calculation of roughly 265,000 kilos. Now the other way you can do this is you can just stuff a whole bunch of components into the ship until it doesn't lift up anymore and then you kind of know where your limit is. So you can do that as well. Um, it's certainly viable. Now the other thing to remember or well actually some of you might not even be aware but all the planets actually have different densities of atmosphere so your thrusters are more or less powerful depending on which planet you're on so if we have a look at the small thruster on earth it's 86.7 kilonewtons if we have a look at it on pertam for example it's 96 kilonewtons and then if we have a look at it on mars it's 72.1 kilonewtons so you can see that the the actual value or the actual strength of your thrusters depending on which planet you're on can change so that's another thing to work out so basically you just change all these values here in this equation and then you can kind of figure out how much thrust you need so that kind of brings me on to the third thing now in order to run all of these thrusters you, you kind of need to figure out how much um, batteries you're going to need and basically I have covered this in a separate video and I will link that video in the description of this video um, and then you can kind of go and check that one out as well but basically yeah you, you can work out how much thrusters or how much each thruster is going to use by going into the control panel and if we have a look at our thruster and we turn the thrust override to maximum actually we don't even need to do that you can see that the th max required input is, is 600 kilowatts so basically if we have a look at the ship right now we can kind of imagine that we are always going to be lifting the ship up so there is always going to be the bottom thrusters going at full pelt and then we can imagine that we are either traveling forwards or we are traveling backwards and then we are either traveling this way or we are traveling that way so basically what you do is you add up all of the the sum total of the back thrusters for example one side and then all the bottom thrusters and then you add all that together and then you can kind of figure out how many megawatts your ship will need to power it and obviously the sum total of that value is that all the batteries on this which it contains five aren't actually enough to keep this thing in the air on the Pertam planet. So that is where this ship comes in. Basically it's exactly the same design as that, but it has one additional battery. And if we go into our control panel here and we have a look at our battery, you can see that each battery is, yeah, it can basically output four megawatts. So yeah, you kind of need to figure out how many megawatts you're outputting from your batteries and how many megawatts your thrusters are consuming just to keep the ship in the air and if you end up going over then you have two options you can reduce the amount of thrusters you have or you can increase the amount of batteries you have so what I've done on this ship just so that I don't have to reduce the amount of cargo storage that it has is I've added an additional battery now the one thing about this is that we can see that this ship is 90, 79,000 kilos whereas this ship is around 70,000 kilos so the only downside to adding more batteries is that the ship then becomes ha heavier um, you can add nuclear reactors but I guess that's more of an end game scenario when you actually have uranium and such so I tend to design my ships with batteries only just so that you know everyone can use them uh, regardless of what level you're at in the game so yeah there is that so anyway what we're going to do is i'm going to move these blueprints up into space and we're going to start modifying them so we're going to add some additional batteries and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to lengthen them but anyway i will see you guys in space and then we'll go ahead and we'll get started all right guys well welcome to space and as you can see in front of me i've got a couple of the ships spawned that we're going to 
modify and all that sort of jazz you can see there the um, the other one has grinders on it just because that's basically what I saved it as so if if we just have a look at this one here though and you can kind of see that the battery is sticking up by one block and in order to fit that battery in the way that I have I've had to lower this large thruster down one block further and you can kind of see in this design it's kind of tucked up into the ship itself so it's it's number one it's protected and number two it's a little bit more streamlined so I think what I'm going to do with this design is I'm actually going to lengthen it by two blocks so my plan here is to basically get rid of this cargo container and get rid of this one here um, and then in between you know these two cargo containers I'm going to place one of these things which is a conveyor frame so if we just have a look at our frame yeah you can see the frame there and basically it's strange because it won't let me show you um, basically you can see that the frame is like one block wide so I'm gonna put it in between there and in between there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this large atmospheric thruster so if, if we just have a look at this you can kind of see that the atmospheric thruster is in the way of that battery um, or it is taller or as tall I should say as that battery so if I move that to the back right and then I move all of these small thrusters down one more block and then I move that to the back then I should be able to fit another battery up the top here even though it takes three blocks and we're only going to add two more of space and then I should also be able to add another battery in here um, because obviously as you can see the battery is two blocks wide so I can add an additional battery here and I can add an additional battery at the top and we're only going to consume up an additional two blocks now before I get started you can see that I have moved these thrusters here at the back backwards um, on this one here on the left and the reason why I've done that is because you can see that this thruster takes up a nine by nine space or a nine block area so three by three space and that's basically going to interfere with these blocks here the second thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to join all of this stuff together um, and put a little bit of a frame around it because if we have a look here um, you can kind of see that these blocks here are not actually attached to these conveyor tubes they are attached to this part here which is then attached to this conveyor but if I then go and remove all of this stuff then there's a chance that all these parts could drift apart so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a frame all the way around on the outside to kind of hold everything together and then later on we can come back and we can delete all of these blocks as we need to um, so we'll just do something like this nothing too fancy but yeah it just kind of pins everything down and together so hopefully this works out for us and we don't get any drifty bits so let's try and sort this frame out all right cool so that should be all of the rest of it pinned together so now I think what I can do is I can get rid of this thruster here in the middle and I'm going to get rid of all these thrusters here so we have six thrusters that we've just deleted so we'll just try and make a mental note of that so if I go into my thrusters and I select my large atmospheric thruster and what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to change this design so that it uses the sci-fi thrusters just because you know I think why not they look a little bit better and yeah it just yeah I don't know I just think they look better so I'm going to make use of those now what I will do is as I mentioned before I'm going to make these thrusters one block lower than the other thrusters and you can see that it's still you know within acceptable limits I think um, or at least I think so anyway so yeah all right then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these but I think what I might do is I might enable mirror mode here so press M key 
I'll select that as my middle and then I'll continually press N until we've got mirror mode enabled which we do now so let me delete these thrusters here and then I should be able to delete this cargo container then this then this then this and then delete all these blocks here in the middle and now these should be separate entities so hopefully all of this stuff is pinned together and none of it's gonna um, fall apart on me I think we should be okay though um, I think everything is pinned together okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some ion thrusters um, because obviously, you know, we're in space and nothing is going to work apart from ion thrusters. So I'm going to place an ion thruster in that direction, in that direction, and then I'm going to place one in the up and down direction as well. Um, it doesn't really matter where you place these thrusters. I mean, it's just, yeah, kind of so that we have a little bit of mobility. Um, in fact, that thruster was probably a poor location because I'm going to get rid of this cargo container and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So let's get rid of that. All right, now let's put in our conveyor frames. So I'm gonna place one there and then I'm going to place another one there. And then what I could do is I could get rid of this, um, this block here, the medium conveyor tube and hmm, Maybe I might do that to try and balance out the design a little bit, make it look a little bit better. Um, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so let's get rid of that. And that's cool because mirror mode is enabled on the second half. Whoa. Let's try not to bump into it because it could shift out of alignment. All right, so what we'll do is we'll place our medium conveyor tube on that side. And mirror mode isn't enabled for this side, so we'll do the same on that side there like that and then from there we can place another conveyor frame which will be like that and another conveyor frame like that and then from there we can place our cargo container so let's move this forward a little bit You can see that it is moving forward, but it is moving forward ever so slowly. So I may need another thruster here. In fact, I think it may be caught on something. Yeah, it's still moving okay, but that's alright. I just have to be patient with this. I think it's just a lot of weight for this thing to move forward. Okay, there we go. That seems to be a bit better. I think it might have been stuck on some other blocks. That's okay. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add in our medium cargo container on either side. So I'm going to add one there and I'm going to add another one there. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. So I'm going to add a cargo container there. And so we have our two conveyor frames there. But, I mean, obviously I can go and change up this design a little bit later, but I guess this is probably the most important step. All right, so let's go ahead and let's put in our additional batteries. So I think what I'll do is I'll place a battery like that. I guess it doesn't really matter which way I have it orientated, but, yeah, that looks okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix up a little bit of this design that was bothering me the whole time. Um, and I'm going to place this battery the same way as all the others are and then I will do the same for this battery as well Or I guess What I could do is I could just place them like this so one there like that and another there like that So we got two at the front on the left With the indicator on the left and two at the rear with the indicator on the right. Yeah That doesn't look too bad. I think that looks okay. Um, what I may do though is I might just get rid of these two um, blocks here just because yeah that might interfere with what we're trying to do a little bit later on then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my thrusters again because if you guys remember just before I actually had six thrusters here so I'm 
going to add my thrusters back. So now that we have our six thrusters back. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and we need to join all this stuff together. So, um, pretty much the only way we can do that is with merge blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this a little bit closer together just so that I can kind of get a better idea of where I need to place my merge blocks. Um, except this thruster is really not moving the ship very fast. So that's a bit annoying, but that's okay. All right, I think that's close enough. So now what I need to do is kind of determine how far or where I need to actually put my merge blocks. So right now we're about one block away from where we need to be. So what I'll do is I'll go up a bit and then I'll put the merge block here, I think, somewhere like here. So if I select my pistons, then the merge blocks are usually underneath that menu. So what I'll do is I'll place a merge block there like that. And then what I'll do is I'll get my blocks again and I'll just create like kind of a frame that goes up this way. And then, so we need, so a merge block is what, one block wide. So that's about two blocks. So I believe that my merge block needs to be here or maybe one block closer. Um, let's place the merge block there. In fact, I think my merge block needs to be one block closer to the other merge block. So it needs to be something like this. And you can see that the merge blocks are too close to each other. So this isn't going to work. So what I need to do is then go into the cockpit and then move this a little bit forward. Um, I don't know why it won't move with the, the weak thruster. That's strange. Anyway, that doesn't really matter too much. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's grab our merge block. Let's put the merge block down, which it lets us, lets us place it now. And then we'll just reverse this back. And then hopefully the merge block should lock and everything should be joined together. Fantastic. Okay, so now everything is joined back together. And you can see that all of our thrusters are now powering on and we have our thrust back. Excellent. All right. So all up, the ship has only ended up being about two blocks longer than its cousin or its brother. And I think that's a pretty good success. So now we've got to start by, well, now we've got to continue. Well, let, let's just check where our connection points are here now. So you can see that all these thrusters are now connected together and they are connected to the batteries, right? So that means that the rear half of the ship is now connected with the front half of the ship. And what we can go ahead and do now is we can actually get rid of the, um, the merge blocks. So I'm going to do that now. And you can see that the thruster at the back, the large thruster, is now spinning. So that means that that is now powered and we are good to go. And you can see that mirror mode has conveniently stayed on for us on the entire ship. So that is very, very nice. Excellent. All right. Well, I think that is mission success. I don't know if I really like this whole design here where the conveyor is here. Maybe I will change it back to this design here. But yeah, I think it's good enough for now. So we'll just kind of go with that. Now what I need to do is kind of add in my blocks that go in between the thrusters here. So what I'll do is I'll just add these blocks back. And we'll do that now. So we'll add them there. Add that there. But I can't because obviously I can't attach anything to that. So I'll go this block. And then I'll put in my number five block again. And then what I'll do is I'll place one there like that. Place my number four. Grab my number five. And place that like that. So that's that section done. Now what I need to do is kind of replicate that across here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the same block here, which I believe is a half block. So we'll grab that. That block there. And I'll make that black. I'm pretty sure that's the color it needs to be. Then I'll grab this block here, which needs to be um, gray. Place that there. Then I'll place 
my half block, which again needs to be black, like that. And then from there, I should be able to place my other block, which will need to be the battered armor gray. And then we can go ahead and we can just fill all this in. Uh, then I need to put in my half slope light armor blocks along there like that. And that should be doing it all for the other side as well, which it is, which is fantastic. Let's add those blocks in there. Awesome. All right, we're looking pretty good. Now, the question is, where do I get rid of some thrusters? So I may go ahead and I may get rid of these thrusters here um, at the back. And because I don't want to add any more additional thrusters to this thing because it's already struggling for power as it is. So basically, I worked out that this thing is consuming about 27 megawatts. And with all these additional thrusters, um, or with, with these additional batteries, then the total output of the ship is now 28 megawatts. So we are just within the acceptable limit of this ship. So it should work out really well, just as long as we don't add any additional thrusters. So let's go ahead and let's change all these thrusters to these ones here. So I'll add in some of these. Now the question is, which way do I want them? I may place them that way. I think that looks better. Let's get rid of them. Get rid of them. Them and them. I'll place them all like that. Fantastic. Now we have our nice sci-fi thrusters installed. And it's looking pretty good. Then we'll get rid of those, install them, get rid of that one, install that one. Fantastic. And then we can do the same with all these. So I'll place one in there. And I could place them... I think I will just place them in their original position. Like that. And then we will get rid of these. Place that there like that. Oop, oop, delete the wrong one. Let's put that there. There we go. And we'll get that one, that one, that one. And then finally, that one there, which goes like that. And we'll do these two on the bottom. Replace those. Replace that there like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to count all of the thrusters on the bottom because remember how I said before, well, I'm not sure if you do or not, but I had 24 thrusters facing down on this ship and I want the same amount of thrusters again. So let me just quickly count these out. So, right, so I actually have 22 thrusters. So what I can do is I can add a thruster there on either side and that's 24 and then that's... 25 and 26 and then I will get rid of these thrusters here just because why not and then that brings us back down to 24 and then if I get rid of these if I put two additional thrusters there then that's 26 thrusters um, I don't know I may add those additional thrusters just because I think it might be beneficial for us um, because let's just, all right, well, first what I'll do is I'll get rid of the weight, the additional weight that these blocks are consuming, and then we'll just see how much extra this ship weighs compared to what it did before. So let's jump in here and let's see how much this thing weighs. So it weighs 74,000 kilos now, whereas before it weighed... 70,000 kilos. Actually, that's not too bad. That's a lot less than what I thought it would weigh. Actually, this one must have something in the cargo containers. Let's have a look here. Yeah, it does. So that, that's why this, um, this thing weighs a, a lot more. So, yeah, I think I could just get away with the initial 24 thruster that I had. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave them there. Bugger it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's leave them there. Okay, so now the only thing I have left to do, I guess, at this stage is take a blueprint of this thing. So we're going to take a blueprint. I'm going to rename it. 
And I'm going to name this thing the Midas World Ship Mark II. Fantastic. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to teleport myself to one of the other planets and we're going to basically grab this blueprint and we're going to test it out. Alright guys, well I'm going to cut to the point where I've gotten to the planet and then we'll go ahead and we'll test this blueprint out. Alright guys, well we are back on planet Pertam and it's time to do some testing. So what I have done is I have spawned in some steel plates into every single cargo container on each ship. And you can see that on the right hand side we have the new ship that we just designed and on the left hand side we have the old ship that was on the workshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compare the performance of both of these ships and we'll just kind of go from that point. So one thing I would like to point out before we get started is that the one on the right is capable theoretically of lifting about 260,000 kilos on the planet Pertam. Um, this one on the left is probably capable of lifting somewhere around 245,000. So this one has a little bit more, I guess, thrust because remember, when we redesigned this ship, we added an additional two thrusters in the upwards direction. But I've I've still only filled the medium cargo containers and I haven't filled the welders. So if we jump into the ship, then we can see that the weight of this ship is about 206,000 kilos. Um, so, and at this weight, I have plenty of power because if you guys remember, I mentioned the fact that the ship was, or all the thrusters on the ship, when I only had 24 on the bottom, and the one large thruster was consuming somewhere in the realm of 27 megawatts of power. Um, but the amount of batteries that I had on the ship was probably putting out about 20 megawatts of power. And that was the whole reason why I've gone through this exercise, was to try and add more power to give it some more oomph, you know, just so that it could actually run properly. So if I press A and W, so A will, you know, shift the ship to the left hand side and W will move it forward and then spacebar, which will move the ship up. So if I press all three of those, you can see that the total power consumption of the ship is about 97%. Now, if I jump out of this ship and basically I have filled the old ship with the exact same amount of steel plates in all the cargo containers and there are the exact same amount of cargo containers in each ship so if I do the same with this ship so I move my ship upwards a little bit and as I said before I press A to go forwards and then I press or sorry I press W to go forwards I press A to go to the left and I press spacebar to go up so if I try and do that then you can see that the ship is actually sinking down to the ground. And yeah, there you go. So that was the main reason why I actually decided to upgrade this ship. And that's what can happen if you don't have enough power to kind of run the thrusters that you have on your ship. And although it is capable of actually lifting everything, it, yeah. If you don't have the batteries to run it, then it's not going to work out very well. And this ship is by far not perfect. So, you know, if I go backwards, because if you notice, I actually have two extra thrusters on the front than I do on the on the back. So I've got eight on the back and ten at the front. So if I go backwards and to the left and then spacebar, then it actually does use 100%. But it's still stable enough where it will actually ascend the only difference is that the conveyors as you can see turn red and they turn off but that's not a massive issue so yeah i think overall this ship is definitely a lot better than the old one and one thing i would like to point out as well is that you're not always going to have a ship full of steel plates so this is kind of like a worst case scenario. So steel plates are one of the heaviest objects in the game. Um, if you have nothing but, you know, construction components, small steel tubes, large steel tubes, you know, um, power cells, things like that, they are components that take up a lot of space but don't actually weigh a lot. So 
if you're building, like, let's say you're printing or you're trying to weld up a, a ship, for example, you're going to have a mixture of components in the ship, in the weld ship. So you don't really need as much thrust. So what I'm doing right now and filling it with steel plates is something that you would probably not always find yourself in a position to do. So there is that to consider as well. Anyway, guys, I really hope this episode was um, informative for you guys. I hope you learned something. And yeah, definitely um, let me know what you guys think of this episode uh, down in the comments below. And anyway, if you like this video, then please consider leaving us a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, then definitely consider subscribing. And I hope to see you guys next time.